500 years ago, uh, the Medici family ruled the city of Florence in Italy. Now, uh, they did a lot of things during their rule, right? Like they assassinated people and poisoned them. I'm not recommending that as your major MO uh, for innovation. But they also did something else. They sponsored highly creative individuals, sculptors, architects, philosophers, painters, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, from all over Europe, even as far away as from China. And they brought them to the city of Florence where they were able to break down the boundaries between the different disciplines, between the different cultures, and ignite what became one of the most creative eras in Europe's history, the Renaissance. This is not about the Renaissance or the Medici family, but it is about the effect that they created and how we can all create the same effect for, in our own lives, in our own companies, for the clients that we serve. And let me just very quickly outline the basic idea around this, the very, very basic idea. There's a lot that we can talk about here, but the very basic idea. The basic idea says, that if you want to combine a concept, there's something like a bikini, for instance, with something like a sandy beach, well, then you're barking up the wrong tree because basically you're not going to be flabbergasted by the innovative potential that this combination offers. <laughs> but if I tell you I'm going to combine a bikini with a burqa or a hijab, now all of a sudden there might be something there. And a woman in, in, uh, from Lebanon did just that. Ahida Sinedi, a traditional Muslim woman, moves to Australia, which is a very strong beach culture. This is a picture of Bondi Beach, right outside of Sydney. It's an amazing beach. Now, uh, she, she realizes that the dress code of that beach is something like this. But for a traditional Muslim woman, you go swimming something like that, which is you know, very uncomfortable. They end up mostly sitting on the beach while the husbands and kids go swimming. So she looks at that and says, well, hold on. Why can't I combine my traditional Muslim culture with the Australian beach culture? Why can't I combine a burqa with a bikini? Why can't I create the burkini? Essentially, it's a burqa out of bikini material. You might just take one guess at how large the market for this would be. It's actually her company has grown by leaps and bounds all over the world. Just as a little side note, you know what? Something I think is interesting about this. It's kind of interesting, right? It's like, how come nobody thought about this before, right? I mean, this right here is uncomfortable, and everybody knows it. <laughs> how come you didn't think about it? And the reason why is because almost all innovative ideas appear obvious after the fact. I mean, the trick is to come up with them before. I mean, that's, that's the challenge, right? Um, so the, the idea here is that you have a better chance of coming up with something groundbreaking if you combine ideas from widely different industries, cultures, fields, disciplines. And this is true also not just for products. It's also true for, uh, for people that work in anything. Business models, concept, Mohammed Yunus. Uh, he, uh, he was a banker. And uh, he uh, also wanted to uh, combine an idea from the field of charity, essentially. He didn't think that charity was done particularly well. And uh, he said, you know, I, I, he thought of this idea, realized that most people that are poor essentially have very little debt, uh, but that's enough to keep them essentially poor. And they do have some assets, small assets, but you know, if we can create something here, if, we, if somebody can give credit to the asset, we can create a loan, a micro loan. And he actually managed to accomplish this. It was very successful, became a, a, uh, a Nobel laureate. He got the Peace Prize. You know, this is amazing. And we can look at this guy and we can say, what a visionary. I mean, OK, look, I'm changing the world here in a small, small, tiny way, but, but that's, that's huge. Could I even could I, could I come up with something like that? Might be the question we ask ourselves. Is that even possible? I mean, how brilliant is this guy? He got a Nobel Prize in peace, and he made this connection. Let's, let's, let's examine his brilliance here for a second. So he, came, he comes up with this idea, and he then decides to execute it. Right? And he's pretty sure that he knows what to do. He, besides, he decides that he's going to try to convince banks to use his microloan idea. Well, they didn't want to play. That failed. OK. All right, so then he goes and says, you know what? I'm going to actually use my own assets to back these loans. But obviously, he can't get any volume. That's a losing idea. All right, now he goes back to the banks and says, you know what? Why don't we try this on an experimental basis? What do you think they said? We don't dare. You know, we're too small. Like, it get real risky on our side. Obviously, that was a joke, but um, <laughs> he couldn't move it. So then he goes to international foundations and asks them for money. He gets some success there. And finally, he realizes that the key for this is to make it into a company mostly owned by its customers. Great success. Leads to the growth of the whole industry. This is, the this is actually a not uncommon path for almost any breakthrough idea. When we look at the idea, we look at it and we we, make, we might make an assumption that the person behind it was brilliant. 
But actually, when you look at how the person made the idea happen, it was really about taking risks and having lots of failures. This is tied, and of course, some inspiration here could be good. I'm just going to put that out there. Even if there are difficulties, there's a key rule in this, and that is that um, if you go through hell, uh, keep going, uh, basically. <laughs> you don't want to get stuck there. Uh, but uh, you have to have the perseverance to push through the way Mabianus did. But let's examine why that is the case. Why is this the case, and why is it the case for every single innovator out there? And it boils down to another basic fact for innovation, which is that groundbreaking innovators generate and execute far more ideas. Research has shown that the single strongest correlation to innovative success, any category, anywhere, artists, scientists, entrepreneurs, policymakers, musicians, are the number of ideas they came up with and then try to make happen. You see this over and over again. Picasso made 20,000 works of art in his lifetime. Einstein published 240 papers. Google has made hundreds of products. You see this relationship over and over again. Coming up with many ideas allows you to come up with a great one, but you're not actually sure if that's going to work, so you have to execute, execute many of those in turn. The reason why we see this relationship is because of a fundamental flaw within humans when it comes to creative and innovative ideas, which is we are not particularly good at predicting what's going to work or not work, right? Because if we were, we would never ever try any ideas that don't work. And we try ideas that don't work all the time. And we can blame the reasons for why they fail. Oh my god, there's a million reasons, right? You could have thought about something, you didn't share it with anybody. Fail! You share it with somebody, the person doesn't like it. Fail! The person loves it, now the committee hates it. The committee loves it, but the idea is no good. The idea is fantastic, but the customer doesn't like it. The customer loves it, but now a competitor beats you to it. There is no competitor, but now there's no supply. There's tons of supply. Actually, that's pretty good, actually, if you, have, if you have all those things lined up. But how often does that happen? Reasons for failure abound. There's so many of them. And that's why we see this relationship. If you want to come up with something that can give great brand equity or great profit margin or incredible market share, you have to keep on trying. You have to keep on trying. Um, and, of course, we see these, the remarkable side piece around this is that innovative people tend to fail a lot more than people that don't innovate, right? Picasso made 20,000 works of art, yes, but most of those are collecting dusts in basements around the world. Do you know why? Because they suck. <laughs> Einstein wrote papers that no one referenced. Zero citations. Einstein! Entrepreneurs come up with awesome companies, and then they come up with companies that fail. Movie directors come up with ideas that we think, they're, we think these directors are, are, are visionaries, and then they, then they come up with some, some, something really just really weird. I mean, did anybody see The Happening? This is <laughs> I mean, this was made by the guy that made The Sixth Sense. This is an amazing movie. OK, now, uh, oh, by the way, this is not the way the stories are told to us, though, when we read books or magazines. Uh, when we read books or magazines, the way a story is told is that we have a visionary, we have a smart person, we have somebody who just saw the future and was able to stake out the way to capture that future, right? Jim Wales, he comes up with an idea. He's going to build an online encyclopedia, and he's going to use the power of the web to do it. This is brilliant. He calls it Newpedia. The way it works is they're going to contact experts, and they're going to write entries and put it online. And after six months, he had 20 entries. He said, OK, well, you know what? i got to change this. I have, OK, so what should I Well, what if I just open it up, and people can sort of put in entries just as they wish? Are you crazy? All right, so obviously you know what this company is called. You use it probably every single day. Does the fact that he didn't think of this first diminish his brilliance? Absolutely not. All people that we call brilliant today went through an enormous amount of failures to get to where they are. It's just that when we write books or when we read articles, when we tell stories to, our, to each other about what it was that happened, we want to find some sort of pathway that we ourselves can follow. OK, so that's a good question then. How, how do we, what type of pathway should we follow? Um, and, uh, and so let me, let me outline how usually an idea gets executed. So here's how what happens. We get an idea, 
and we try to find a direction for that idea, and then we select something. We say, this is a good way to do it. Let's do it this way. And we set up the goal. It's going to be a big goal. Let's go for, let's go for, let's go for this, and let's make, it, let's make it visionary, let's make it big, and then we shoot for that. Great. And here's some resources, and in this case, resources might be money, but it could also be, uh, it could also be a reputation. Oftentimes, actually, it is reputation that you're using when you pursue an idea. And we get there, and then when we get there, we realize that was the wrong goal. Actually, this doesn't work. Instead, we should have been over here. But you know what? We now have no resource to get there. In fact, the best move would have been to go there from the beginning. Oh my god, we're screwed. Uh, so I'm going to get back to our graph in just a second. Let me just first uh, impress upon you a, a particular picture from Jukas Jarve in northern Sweden. Okay, this is pretty much all that exists in this area. And this guy says, you know what, this would be a great place. Great place to make a major Swedish tourist destination. And he actually does it by combining ice with the concept of a hotel. Have any of you been to an ice hotel? It's a few of you, right? It's a really remarkable concept. Everything in an ice hotel is made out of ice. The beds you sleep on, the glass you drink of. Some of you have seen milder versions of this through ice bars around the world. But here, everything is made out of ice. And this was a success. It is Sweden's largest tourist attraction. The reason, the, the thing that limits the growth in Yukasjärve is because we don't have enough planes to fly tourists there. Okay, now, and people look at that and go, oh my god, this is fantastic. Look, economic development. We should do something like that. We should create something, maybe not an ice hotel, maybe it's a sand hotel, maybe it's a, maybe it's a palm hotel. But, but we, should, we should create something like that. This is visionary. Really? Is this how it actually happened? So, so let's, let's look at how this guy did it. He got an idea to sell the winter. This was his concept. And he decides that he wants to create something called an ice, ice exhibit, where you basically have sculptures out of ice, and people can go and look at them. He thinks, that's a, he thinks people want to see that. But he does not decide to put everything behind it. He creates some small exhibit and, and tests it. Uh, well, uh, you know what? It's interesting. But it's not all of that. So then the next year he decides to create a snow gallery. You can do stuff out of snow, like you can do snow angels. It's nice. Uh, so he does try stuff. Well, you know, okay, it, it's, it works. It's not exactly groundbreaking either. Okay, well, how about an event hall? Let's create a, a hall this size. Or actually, it's bigger. And we're going to put stuff in here. I'm sure people are going to want to come and look at things made out of ice. And, you know, actually, you know, it kind of worked that as well. And one of the things he tried in that place was that he had actually created a bed out of ice that people could sleep on with their, if they brought their sleeping bags. And it turned out that people really liked that. And then after that, he created an ice hotel. And once that worked, he just went for it full speed ahead. Now, what's the secret in this? What is it that makes this work? This. This right here. What is the smallest executable step you can take for any other ideas that you developed? Define it. Because that is the scope of the risks that you're willing. That's the, that's the bet that you should be able to place on the idea. You don't, have to, you don't have to bet your whole reputation or all your money or your time to make it work. And in fact, most ideas that do break new ground, that change the world, they never started out as a massive vision. There are some of them. I love the story about NASA and the moon. There are some exceptions. There are some exceptions. But most ideas start out exactly this way. And for most of us in, in, in this room, this is how we should pursue them. Now, that opens up another question, though. What's the point of strategy? Like, if you could try something you don't know if it's going to work, why, why would you even sit down to develop a strategy, right? Because, I mean, you can, you can spend time, and you come up with something, and then you, then you try it, and, well, it doesn't work. Um, and so uh, I'm going to argue that strategy actually is very important, but for a reason that usually is different from what people are stating. I believe if you're doing something that is a well-known process, if you've done it before, the strategy might matter, and tactics might matter. Right? If you're going to McDonald's, you order a Big Mac, you get a quarter pounder, you know, there's nothing innovative about, about that. This, that is just a plain old failure. You can, you can play on processes and, and tactics and strategies to make that work. But if you're trying something innovative, you're trying something new, then the purpose of a strategy is to convince yourself that it's going to work. 
And there's lots of different ways we convince ourselves. Maybe we do it intellectually. We want to we at least look at some numbers to convince ourselves this is the right path. Or maybe we're more emotional. We want to get a gut feel for what's going to work. I don't care. Whatever works for you. Whatever works for you, but then you can come up with a strategy, and maybe if it's a good show, you can convince others around it. So maybe you can free up some money to pursue this idea. But the purpose of a strategy is not to come up with something that's going to carry you all the way forward, and it's not to come up with the right answer. Because there's no one right answer. The purpose of strategy is to enable you to act. Convince yourself that you figured it out and you're going to move. Is it the right way or not? Pro absolutely not. It's not going to be the right answer. There's no way that that is the case. But it doesn't matter, because you have to start acting. And whatever it is that you need to do to convince yourself to act, that's the purpose of strategy. You've got to get something done. And I love this quote by the CEO of uh, Southwest Airlines, um, the former CEO, the founder as well, the Herb Kelleher. We have a strategic plan. It's called doing things. <laughs> but it shows essentially how he approaches the idea of over, uh, basically he hates over analytics. There's certain things they can analyze. Those are the things they have a lot of numbers for. They're the things they've done in the past. But if you're going to try something new, you just got to try it. And it either works or it doesn't work. Uh, when you think of an idea, and I love the concept of 99%. When you think of an idea, and you feel that this is an idea that you're ready to pursue, then just do it. Just start. The likelihood of you having come up with an execution path that is, that is wrong or misguided is close to 100%. Just acknowledge that and get started. And the way you can keep on trying out these pathways, the way you can take, make these bets, is by minimizing the amount of resources you put behind them. That's what I call the smallest executable step. And you know what's great about intersections? Intersections between different fields and cultures? It is that we have the best chance of coming up with phenomenal ideas at these intersections, and we actually have a tremendous opportunity to come up with many of them. At these intersections, we unlock a plethora, an explosion of ideas. And we can pick and choose those that are best and those that will ultimately be the strategy for us to change the world. Thank you. Thank you.